Hello, in this video we will learn how to draw more circle for a general two dimensional stress system. Consider an element subjected to a normal stress, normal tensile stress sigma x of 27 mega Pascal in this plane. So same magnitude 27 mega Pascal in opposite direction will act here so that this element remain in equilibrium. Other stresses are sigma y compressive stress 45 mega Pascal in this plane and one shear stress tau xy is equal to 18 mega Pascal. Now when one shear stress is applied at this phase automatically at this phase in opposite direction another shear stress will come of same magnitude. Now these two together are forming a couple so to balance that couple another two shear stresses in these two planes will occur and the magnitude of these two shear stresses will also be same as 18 mega Pascal. These are called complementary shear stresses. Now using more circle you can determine normal stress at the given plane. Here one plane is given which is inclined at an angle of 75 degree from this plane in anti-clockwise direction. In this plane we can determine normal stress, we can determine shear stress, we can also determine maximum and minimum normal stresses which are called principal stresses and position of plane in which these stresses are occurring. Now principal stresses occur at planes where shear stresses are zero. Similarly in one plane there will be a maximum shear stress that shear stress we can determine and corresponding normal stress at that condition will also be determined. For drawing more circle we use following sign conventions. For normal stresses if normal stress is tensile stress we take it as positive. If it is compressive stress we take it as negative. In case of shear stress Clockwise rotation of element will be positive and anti-clockwise rotation is negative. Here you can see that sigma x is tensile so this will be taken as positive. Sigma y is compressive, compressive stress so it is negative. Now these two shear stresses in this plane, these planes are actually called x plane and this plane is called y plane. So in x plane these two are x plane, in these two planes these shear stresses are tending to rotate this element in clockwise direction. So this tau xy is positive in this plane x plane and in y plane you can see that these two are tending to rotate this in anti-clockwise direction. So these two shear stresses are negative in according to our sign convention. Now we need to determine normal stresses in this element in this small element. So draw free body diagram. So in this diagram you can see that one stress 45 mega Pascal is acting at this plane and one stress of 27 mega Pascal is acting on this plane. These two are normal stresses and shear stresses are 18 mega Pascal in this direction and 18 mega Pascal in this direction. In this plane you will get an another stress. That stress can be resolved into two components. One in normal component which is sigma n and another is tangential component which is tau. We have to determine these two stresses in this plane. For that we will draw more circle. So in more circle along axis we mark normal stresses and along ordinate we mark shear stresses. One stress 27 mega Pascal is given. From this point O draw in positive direction 27 mega Pascal mark one point sigma x. This is sigma x is equal to OA. OA is equal to 27. So this length is proportional to 27 mega Pascal. Now this is another normal stress is 45 mega Pascal but it is negative so sigma y is negative 45 mega Pascal. So in negative direction you will draw 45 so draw another point 40 b 45 mega Pascal so this is proportional to 45 mega Pascal. After getting these two points you can determine middle point of this a b that will be the center point of the circle. This can be determined center point c can be determined using this relation sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 that is 27 this is negative 45 minus 45 divided by 2 is equal to minus 9. So in minus 9 that means in left direction you will mark point c which is at a distance of minus 9. You can see that in x plane a shear stress positive shear stress of 18 mega Pascal is applied. So from here a draw one line which is equal to 18 mega Pascal which is proportional to 18. Now this point is representing state of stress in this particular plane. So 27, 18. This point D means at this point 
normal stress is 27 megapascal and shear stress is 18 megapascal. This point D is representing state of stress in this vertical plane. Similarly, you have to draw another vertical line at B. You can see that at this phase in Y plane, in Y plane there is another shear stress of same magnitude 18 megapascal but in anti-clockwise direction, so negative direction. So in negative direction mark one vertical line and mark this point E. So this point E is representing state of stress in this particular plane. So at this particular plane stresses are minus 45 and minus 18. So once you get these two points, join these two points. Now take C as center and CD as radius, draw one circle. This is the required Mohr circle. So once you get this requ required Mohr circle, you need to determine radius of this circle. That is CD you can determine. So radius of the circle CD. From this right angle triangle CAD, CD is equal to root over CA square plus AD square. So CA and AD, we know that CA is equal to 27 plus 9. So that is 36 square plus this height is 18 square. In that way you get radius of this circle as 40.22. Now angle ACD also required. So this angle can be determined from this right angle triangle. This angle is tan inverse opposite divided by adjacent. So that is 18 divided by 36 when you get, uh, then you will get approximately 27 degree. So this plane CD is representing your X plane, this plane and CE is representing your Y plane. Now to determine rate of stresses in this particular plane, you have to mark this plane in this Mohr circle. Now this plane can be marked here 75 degree now this plane is making 75 degree anti-clockwise direction in from X plane. So from X plane, this is CD is your X plane. So from CD in anti-clockwise direction, you have to take one angle which is double of this. That is 150 degree angle you have to take from CD in anti-clockwise direction. So this is what I have drawn. Then draw one line and this point is this line is meeting at this point G. So G is representing state of stress in this particular plane. That means you have to determine coordinates of G. So for that what I have done, I have drawn one vertical line from G and mark this point H. So coordinate of point G is equal to length OH. This is your X coordinate and HG will be your Y coordinate. In that way you will get uh, normal stress and shear stress. So uh, to get this length, we need this right angle triangle. I have drawn this right angle triangle again here. So this point is C, uh, this is H and this point is G. Now this small angle is 3 degree. You can see this is 27 degree and this is 150 degree. So it, uh, it comes these two together 177 degree. Now this total is 180. So 180 minus 177. This small angle is 3 degree. So from this you can get value of normal stress sigma n. So sigma n is equal to OH which is equal to CH plus OC. OC is 9 and CH is equal to CH. From this right angle triangle you can get CH is equal to CG cos 3. So this is CG cos 3 plus 9, CG cos 3 plus 9. If you calculate this, you will get 49.16 megapascal. Now this 49.16 in negative direction, so sigma n is negative minus 49.16 megapascal. Now this Hg, shear stress is Hg, vertical component. So this tau is equal to Hg. Now this Hg is directly you can get CG sin 3 degree. So that value is equal to 2.1 megapascal. Now this is in positive direction. Now here we have assumed this sigma n as tensile that is positive. But actually it is 49.16 negative direction. And tau we have assumed here as positive because with respect to any point inside this element direction of tau is clockwise and therefore this is um, this we have taken positive. Now tau is actually positive so this direction is correct but sigma n is uh, negative so what direction the direction is not correct you have to correct that direction. So I have corrected it sigma n is compressive. And in this way you have obtained uh, normal stress and shear stress in this plane in this particular plane. In this way you can determine in any plane normal stresses and shear stresses. Now in next step we need principal stresses. Now 
this all the points of this circle are representing state of stress in different planes or in different orientation of this element. Now you have to determine points where shear stresses are zero in this particular circle. Now you can see at this particular point there is no shear stress and at this particular point there is no shear stress. So these two points are representing principal stresses because principal stresses are stresses on planes where shear stresses are zero. This point J and K are representing principal stresses. That means OJ and OK are two principal stresses. To get this values sigma 1 that is one principal stress OJ is equal to you can see that this is OJ is equal to CJ minus CO. CJ is radius of the circle which we have already determined 40.22. So this is 40.22 minus 9 and value is coming 31.22 megapascal. So the principal stress is OK sigma 2 is equal to OK which is equal to OC plus CK. Now CK is radius and OC is 9. So in this way you will get 40.22 plus 9 is equal to 49.22 megapascal. But this is in negative direction OK. So sigma 2 is minus 49.22 megapascal. This, these are the two principal stresses in this particular uh, element under these stresses. Now position of these principal stresses can be obtained. You can see that one position is CJ which is making an angle of 27 degree clockwise from your X plane. So this plane is your X plane. From this X plane, uh, this sigma 1 is making an angle of 27 degree in clockwise direction. So half of this angle is 13.5 degree. So you have to take 13.5 degree. I have made this element another element which is making. So this plane is making an angle of 13.5 degree in clockwise direction in clockwise direction from this X plane. So from X plane clockwise direction uh, this plane is making. So in this plane in this particular plane you will get sigma 1. So 31.22. Similarly this OK, this OK you can see in clockwise direction from CE that means from Y plane it is making an angle of 27 degree in clockwise direction. So you have to make again this from Y plane, this is your Y plane. From Y plane it is making an angle of 13.5 degree, half of the 27 degree. So in this plane you will get second principal stress which is compression in nature. So I have drawn compression in nature 49.22 megapascal. You can see now in this plane, in these planes, there will be no shear stress because principal planes are those planes where shear stresses are zero. So now next we will determine uh, maximum shear stress. You can see that maximum shear stress occur at these two endpoints. If you draw vertical line then at this point and this point you will get two maximum shear stresses. So this is in positive maximum shear stress and this is negative maximum shear stresses and these two values are same and these two values are equal to radius of the circle so which we have already determined. Now this plane is making an angle of 63 degree you can see it is this is 63 so this angle is 90, de 90 degree so this angle is 63 degree from X plane and this shear stress is making same 63 degree from Y plane in anti-clockwise direction and magnitude of this shear stress is equal to tau max is equal to radius of the circle this uh, Mohr circle which is equal to 40.22 megapascal and at this particular position uh, x coordinate or sigma coordinates are you can see this distance is the sigma coordinate which is equal to 9 in negative direction so minus 9 megapascal in both these cases normal stresses are same which is equal to pi minus 9 megapascal. Now this particular plane is making an angle of 90 degree from this principal plane. These are the principal planes. From principal planes these are making 90 degree in more circle. So in actual condition this plane will make 45 degree half of the angle 45 degree from this particular plane. So from this particular plane uh, maximum shear plane will be at an angle of 45 degree. But from this X plane and Y plane, this will, this, this will be 63 degree, that means 31.5 degree we ho you have to make. So I have drawn this plane. Now you can see that this plane, this plane is making from this Y plane, this plane is your Y plane, this plane is Y plane. From Y plane, this is making an angle of 31.5 degree 
in anti clockwise direction so here shear stress is equal to 40.22 mega pascal so this is uh, now this shear stress is negative so you can see that this inside any point this shear stress is anti clockwise direction now this shear stress the, uh, this i have drawn here this plane which is making 31.5 degree from x plane this plane is x plane from x plane this plane is making 31.5 degree in anti clockwise direction 31.5 degree half of this in anti clock anti anti clockwise direction in this plane you are getting this clockwise shear stress this shear stress is clockwise these two so if these two planes are uh, where you are getting clockwise shear stress and these two planes are where you are getting this anti clockwise shear stresses value 40.22 mega pascal in shear stress and in all, both the plane you are getting same 9 mega pascal of compressive stresses in this way you can determine normal stress and shear stress at a given plane you can determine principal stresses and location of the plane in which those principal stresses are occurring and maximum shear stress and corresponding normal stress all these things you can determine using mohr circle now this method appears as uh, a graphical method but it is what i have done is uh, a combination of uh, graphical and analytical so uh, these all these things which i have done using analytically that means applying trigonometric rules and geometry so therefore uh, you can draw this it is not necessary to draw this circle with exact dimensions all these uh, are not necessary to draw it with exact dimensions but uh, proportionately with free hand also you can draw and after that you can make these calculations thank you for watching this video